Hello everybody. Just gonna try and um, get you a, another fish. Let's see what we can do. When you're casting, always check your rod tip that the line is not tangled around the end when you cast. Um, what else? When you cast, make sure that you've got plenty of line dangling down so you can get, get enough, get sort of like some easy compression in the rod tip when you cast. Just, just a little, little tip. If you're casting into the wind, just put a, put a slightly heavier lead on, things like that. Shock leader. Depends on what lure you're casting, but you can go down to like 20 pound. 20 pound sort of mono or braid. If you braid, use as heavy as you want. You could sort of put on a 50 pound shock leader for braid. So it's ever such a thin di diameter. So you notice I'm sort of fair, fair length down there, probably about, I don't know, it's about four foot. You get much more natural action and compression in your rod tip. We've got the wind behind us today. That's just, I think that's landed in a. Just gotta keep winding. You ain't gotta jerk the rod or anything like that, just got The lure's doing the work. And you just. Just a relaxed retrieve. being a relaxing day so even though you are sort of working at it it's nice just to have a bait out there and just to leave it oh, I used to like that fishing I still do like that fishing um, but if you are lure fishing you want to try and set yourself up in a way like light rod light reel nice little light lures to cast out so you can just do it all day bring bring, bring food and drink so you don't get you know and a jacket and a warm jacket so you don't get so you don't those reasons are not the reasons why you have to nip back to the car. And um, so it's just a very relaxed retrieve. Just a slow retrieve. One retrieve is about a metre, so not too bad. Rod tips buffer in a way, which is good. And you want to sort of when the lure gets close in, that's a, that's a good time. You may think that's about, you know, your chance of getting a fish is over. It's often not the case. Most of the fish are um, in, it, in it of feet. But if you can see some fish, try and cast to them. And it's just, come on fishy, where are you? Come on, I know you want it. Sometimes they're just like, they just cannot stop woofing it down. And another time, they're just, you know, you get a little bit close. And then another time, you just be casting and casting. And there's bugger all there, and you just wondering what sort of happened. Reasons why they sort of, sort of turn themselves off. So you just have to sort of keep an eye on things, really. You have to sort of check your own gear. Make sure your gear's not coming back tangled. And if it is, you want to know why. There's all sorts of things. sorts of reasons and things you can just sort of keep improving on, keep checking on. You can change your lure. Often the colour of the sea, um, you know, if it's not that clear, you want some sort of bright colours on. You want sort of like some white, white is a good colour. If it's clear, bright sort of silver sort of colour is, is, is effective. And so you want to experiment and just sort of try with your different lures and um, different types of lures as well you know have a have a selection of things to try and sort of say to yourself well if it's efficient slow just say right we'll have 10 casts 15 20 casts with one particular lure and then you um, just snip it off and put on like a rapala try a rapala then you could try, try a metal ticer after that try different weights try 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 large ones try small ones 
remember you want to be able to cast a fair way out so you don't want to go too small but you know you can catch some good fish on like something like 10 15 15 gram lure so it's just gone off the boil ever so slightly you know, it's like i always like to sort of make a general record of um if the fish has got been good then go slow i'd like to sort of find out what what the tide is doing you know whether um whether it's just gone high water or low water or and i just like and i also like to remember that try and log the times of when the fishing was good as well and um might not be too much in it but if you want to go fishing the next day you want to turn up at the times when you've done well so it's good to keep a diary of things if you can if you're really keen if you're going after a difficult fish a fish which you've struggled to catch keep a record and keep a record of your research as well baits time of year um, sea temperature, uh, sea state, wind, what's what somebody caught it on, all these sort of things. You should never stop asking other anglers as well. The famous question, what did you catch it on? What did you catch it on? That's my favourite question when I um, see an angler sort of packing his gear up and he's putting it in his car, I'll always just get out of my car and I'll just wander over and say, oh hi, I saw you got a, um, a fish there, what'd you catch it on? You know, they tell you all sorts of stuff. Half the time, half the time the fish are caught by accident, by fluke, they're using a bait which is not even sort of tailored for that species. Usually a certain fish will have a, a real top bait which you should use to catch it. You go and chat to some people and you'll be amazed how fluky they are. You'll be absolutely amazed, mate, how jammy some people can be. And I am not kidding. I am not kidding. Now, I don't know what's happening here. It's gone a bit slow. It's gone a bit slow. Wind's changed a little bit. Try not to lose my hat in the sea. It's a brand new cap, and it keeps sort of winds behind me. Keeps sort of waggling and sort of trying to say I'm about to disappear ten foot out to sea. And I'll be like, oh great, so I've got to go, to go into bloody um, the store and buy another cap. So it might be time to put the cap in the bag. But, um, I don't know what's going on here because I'm not getting the bites I were earlier on. It's almost like they've just the fish have shifted around a bit. I know they like this lure. sort of gone in there a little bit so I, I could muscle in there with everybody else but I like to I like to have the place to myself I like to sort of have the freedom but, um, remember we are actually after Chinook salmon it's easy to get um, sort of hooked on catching these bloody Australian salmon because that was a good fun just look at here we are we're in we're in we're in look at that we're in what is this we're in mate we're in we're in exactly very very sloppy as if to say I can't believe I've been hooked so just gotta it keeps porpoising. Oh, there's two on. There's... What's going on here?
fish right out there going crazy. I don't know whose that one is. Here's my one anyway. It's going berserk. This one, this is quite a good fish. What a good fish. Here he is. Just gotta take your time with 10 pound braid. Yeah, good lunges. Remember there's no hurry, 10 pound line, 15 pound leader, just let him tire out. Let him tire out, let him thrash himself out. Beached himself luck and then another wave comes to save his butt. What we got here, what is that? It's just good fish. Another wave comes, Let's bring him up a bit uh, with the wave. Good fish. Right. Look at that. My lure stick that was made for There he is. Bring him on the sand. Bring him on the sand. Just get the, the lure and you just identify where it is and you just you just force it out the other way. Just use the just keep wriggling it. Right, it's caught right in the corner of his mouth, and that's probably the, the best place you want to hook a, hook a fish. Come on, you. Come on. Poor little thing. Just cannot get it out. Yeah. Oh, that's got it. Right in his jaw. That was just not coming out for him. But anyway, look at that. Power of him, look. Power. Five, six pounds. Just beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. If you'll just let me put him back. Just try and see if I can just do him like this. Just, just lob him back. Look, very shallow there, but he'll go back easy, easy peasy, easy peasy lemon squeezy. So people catching the um, the fish, fish and chips tonight, definitely, 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 definitely. Yeah, they're not they're not too bad eating. They're just um, you just got to sort of pretty much. It's a good idea to do a lot of your filleting and before you go back home, so you ain't got to do it. You can do it all on the beach. It's a good it's a good way of doing it. Bring your um, bring your bags. It's even better if you have got some ice and stuff like that to put it on ice and things. But if you do all your fillets before, so when you get in, you ain't got to, you ain't got to do any of it. Do it all down here. There you are, that's that scale or something on the end of the hook. Yuck. Anyway, that's the lure lot. So, so it imitates their um, their bait fish, you see. Imitates their bait fish. Yeah, there's the ball sinker. 30 pound uh, leader. It's shock leader there. That's just what I had. That's what I use for Mulloway. It's my main line for Mulloway. It's a 30 pound mono off the rocks. Mono is, is good when you're fishing snaggy areas. Braid, when if you're fishing somewhere snaggy, that's a nightmare. You'll just lose it. That just gets caught on everything. When you've got an open beach like this, braid is, um, especially light braid, they're perfect for casting. 
no wind knots but you want to use mono when it's um, snaggy and if you're fishing at night especially and you can't really see what you're doing you want to try and make it see and there's a bit more with mono there's a little bit more forgiveness if you make a mistake in the dark if you've got a decent fish on with mono there's a lot more stretch in it because when we're braid you make a mistake and um, that can be catastrophic and the mistake could be something quite simple like you could get your line wrapped around one of the rod rings or your your, your line could get caught around the second rod you were fishing or something like that and if you're fishing at night it's um it's a lot more difficult but the rewards are really high because the fishing is actually better at night if you're bait fishing especially it's um you can lure fish at night with um, luminous lures but you um bait bait fishing is um is really really good at night um that's one of my favorite types of fishing just going to a beach deserted beach by myself with the right bait and um, head torch and just sort of targeting certain species but um, this is this is lovely weather it's about, it's about nearly 30 degrees today I would say lovely warm wind short sleeve top on um, hot muggy and um, it's actually it's actually Chinook salmon we're actually targeting here and I've had them up to 13 pounds off this off this bit of water here but the the bet that yeah we're in we're in we're in we're in we're in we're in here we are here we are we're in we're in yeah head shakes head shakes not a huge fish, I don't think. Oh, he, oh, he's just jumped out of the water and he spat the hook. No, he's not. He's still on. He's just, he's just, he's just, he's just, I'm just going to back up a bit because they've got so much speed. They sort of, God. Christ. He's gone berserk, this one. He's gone berserk. He's taken line. He's, he's going to get in the river. I know he is. Oh, no. He's going in the river. He's going to go in the river. I'm going to have to try and get to him. He's gone. 